do, 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 do. Ain't no drag. Do, 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 do. Tom's got a brand new bargain bag. <laughs> Greetings one and all, and welcome to Tom's Hit Parade. Uh, bargain Bag is the uh, order of business in this video. It's probably going to be a relatively short and sweet video, because I can't really think of anything to uh, lead off with before we get into the business at hand. Uh, you guys know the drill. Bargain Bag is my monthly hunt for buried audio treasures in the form of a mystery CD grab bag containing eight CDs, well, eight titles. There might sometimes be more than one disc in a uh, particular case. So, as was the case with last month's bag, which you'll see in just a second. Uh, yes, uh, before I get to opening this new bag, I have a uh, little TV tray here that I've set stuff on, so that's why it's waking up a little bit. Uh, before I open the new bag, I'm going to break down what I found in last month's bag in a rough order from castoffs to keepers. Uh, there were a couple of very good keepers here uh, this week, so let's just go ahead and jump right on into things. Uh, we have a couple of R&B titles uh, leading off this pack, and unfortunately, yes, uh, with me naming them first, they were kind of, uh, they were not winners this time, just for some reason. Uh, I can be a little picky about my R&B when it's too contemporary and has too many hip-hop-ish elements in it. It kind of loses me, as is the case with Jill Scott. Uh, this is Who is Jill Scott? Words and Sounds, Volume 1. I had tried the CD out years ago, years ago, and it uh, obviously didn't click with me because I got rid of it. And is the case uh, again with the same title. And uh, Maxwell with his album Now, uh, same deal. They're both good artists, Jill Scott and Maxwell. Uh, just they did not uh, the, the music on these CDs obviously just didn't click with me. Uh, but uh, yeah. Decent stuff. And Jill Scott, I think I mentioned the story uh, in last month's bag, but in case you didn't uh, watch the video, I first happened across her, and one of the reasons why I originally bought that uh, Who is Jill Scott CD the first time around was because she played the lead in a detective series that was on HBO for one short season. It was called The Number One Ladies Detective Agency. It was based on a series of novels, and it took place in Botswana, of all places. And not only is she a gifted musician, singer, and uh, rapper, she is also a pretty darn good actress. So if you happen across that series, I recommend it, especially if you like mysteries. And if you like stuff that takes place in foreign locales, check that show out. The Number One Ladies Detective Agency. Anyway, moving on to the other stuff. I have a, uh, a jazz slash new age maybe-ish uh, CD here by Brian Hughes. Uh, Straight to You is the name of it, and it had a lot of Latin rhythms, uh, which is kind of cool. I, I sometimes like Latin music. Uh, this music was just not quite distinctive enough for me. It just kind of blended into the background, sort of. Um, he's definitely a, a good guitarist, a competent guitarist, and uh, the musicians he has with him on here are very, very good as well. Just The music just didn't strike me. I didn't connect with it, so to speak. And here we have, I might actually keep this one. So if I keep this one, there are five keepers out of eight CDs in here. So not a bad ratio. Um, David Foster and Friends, uh, Hitman. This is kind of a, was a live concert salute to songwriter and producer David Foster. Uh, some good artists in here. Uh, Charisse does a, what I believe is a uh, Whitney Houston medley. I Have Nothing and I Will Always Love You. I, I, you, I suppose you could call I Will Always Love You a, a Dolly Parton song, but uh, she does, the, Charisse does the Whitney Houston arrangement of it. And we've got Michael Bublé and Blake Shelton team up on a song here, and Josh Groban and Brian McKnight do a cover of Simon and Garfunkel's Bridge Over Troubled Water, which is very good. And uh, Peter Cetera does a medley of Chicago hits, Hard to Say I'm Sorry, you're the Inspiration, and, well, Glory of Love, that was a solo hit by Peter Cetera. Cetera? Cetera. Uh, so, a good set of songs on here. Oh, uh, Celine Dion performs Because You Loved Me. And also, there's also a DVD. Uh, yes, the CD is only nine tracks, but the DVD is, uh, I have not watched it yet. But I think I'm going to keep this for the DVD. I never seem to remember to actually go in and watch the DVDs that, uh, on 
in my music collection that are kind of piggybacking audio CDs. They just never enter my mind to watch them. I don't know why. I really should uh, try and make a mental note, or better yet, an actual paper physical note at some point to uh, start watching these things. Goodness knows I have plenty of them to watch. Uh, next up here is uh, something for the country music fans and something for the American Idol fans. Josh Grayson, his debut album. Pretty darn good, I have to say. I'm not a huge country fan, but this is pretty good. And what was the really good song? I think it was Nothing to Lose. It's got a, a lot of, a, a very, very fast beat and really kind, kind of fun to get into. And uh, uh, the closing track, The Other Little Soldier, was a little bit, uh, you know, a little flag wavy, a little bit propaganda ish, maybe, but uh, depending on your uh, outlook of it, I don't know. That's kind, of, that's kind of the way it came across to me at, at first, anyway. But uh, very good voice, good singer, and uh, there's a reason he went to, wasn't, didn't he come down to like the top five or top six of that year of American Idol? I can't remember. But uh, yeah, good stuff. It was not a year of American Idol that I watched, so I, I'm not sure, don't know for certain. But anyway, uh, next up we have uh, this one. My sister never had the CD, at least I don't think she did. If she did, it was never, it was not in the collection that I inherited from her, but this is a CD she would have absolutely have loved. Uh, Paul Brown and Friends uh, with the album White Sand, and not only is he a fantastic guitarist, he's got kind of a George Benson uh, way with his guitar, so, you know, that that's kind of right up my alley. George Benson is one of my favorite guitarists, jazz guitarists. Uh, but the list of guest artists on here, uh, my sister had in the collection that I inherited from her, CDs from most of the artists that are that guest on here. Uh, Rick Braun, a great uh, trumpet player. Uh, David Benoit, a fantastic pianist. Boney James, another a fantastic saxophone player. He was, my sister must have had like nine Boney James CDs in the in the uh, collection. And uh, Al Jarreau features on, on vocals on a song here. And they're uh, mostly uh, original songs, I think. There are a few covers. Uh, for what it's worth, the Stephen Stills penned song that uh, I believe it was the Buffalo Springfield made popular in the 60s. Uh, Stop, hey, what's that sound? Everybody, what's going down? And then I Say a Little Prayer, the uh, Back Rack and David hit is also on here. There's also a song called Mercy, Mercy, Mercy that is not Mercy, Mercy, Me, the ecology, the, the uh, Marvin Gaye song. This is a different song, and I'm not sure who first performed it, but that is a cover, is done as a cover on here as well. So, very, very good album, and a definite keeper, as are these other two, the last two in the list. Uh, I really was not holding out a lot of hope for this album because her most recent album that she put out last year, I was unfortunately very disappointed in. We're talking Diana Ross, but an interesting story with this album. Uh, this was originally recorded at the end of 1971 and the beginning of 1972, but was never released. It was shelved until 2006. Yes, uh, so 30 years. It was uh, uh, just con collecting dust, and then somebody, for whatever reason, decided to finally release it, release it in 2006. But yes, mostly a cover of blues and jazz songs. Uh, very wonderfully done, and the musical arrangements on these are fantastic. Gorgeous musical arrangements. Uh, what a Difference a Day Makes. Uh, I think that might have been an Irving Berlin song. And Let's Do It, Let's Fall in Love. That's a great one. But Beautiful. Uh, my mother really liked that song. And Love is Here to Stay. That's a wonderful one. And so, yeah, a very, very good album. A very, very pleasant surprise from Diana Ross. So that is also a definite keeper. And the winner, winner, chicken dinner for this month's, uh, well, or I guess as it were last month's bargain bag, is a Canadian group named ConCan. Uh, what I found out is this is a play on words of the Canadian phrase CanCon, which is Canadian content, uh, which is kind of the, I don't know if it's just a guideline or if it's actually a rule or a, a statute in Canada that they have to play a certain percentage of Canadian artists on the radio. So that's kind of where they draw their name from. But this is a dance pop project, uh, and this is their second album. I'm already starting to look online for their first album. Uh, it's kind of it's it's very very 1990, yeah, uh, circa 1990 is 
1990 is when this album was made, but the sound is very circa 1990. That's what I'm trying to say. Lots of synthesizers. Um, if you picture uh, Ace of Bass, but with a little bit of a New Jack Swing kind of a sound to it, uh, it it's kind of, I, I like it. it. You'll find it very dated, but I really enjoy, uh, enjoyed that album. Uh, un un unexpectedly enjoyed it. I might not have gone for it if I'd known in advance what it was. That kind of sounds strange. I might have had different expectations if I had known what it was going into it, but as it was, I had never heard of the artist before, so uh, I listened to it with fresh ears and was pleasantly surprised. So if you like Ace of Bass and uh, that kind of stuff, uh, CNC Music Factory maybe, give Con Can a try. This is their sophomore album, Syntonic. And as I said, I am already looking for their debut album. So there you go. A pretty darn nice um, uh, batch of albums in last month's Barking Bag. So let's go ahead and tear on into this one, figuratively speaking, of course. Oh, <laughs> I cut it at the wrong place. I needed to cut it at this spot. I cut it over here at first, but I needed to cut it over here to actually get the bag to open. Anyway. And cutting off the excess excess baggage, as it were. Well, first of all, water break. Okay, and now let's see what's in here. We have Ah, George Jones, a country artist, classic country from the 60s, 70s, I believe. So, uh, yeah, never afraid to check out classic country stuff, so that could be interesting. Then we have Auto Interiors, Let's Agree to Deceive Our Best Friends. Interesting uh, name for this album. A, a 2007 release on Ryko, the Ryko disc label. I have never heard of those guys, so it'll be an interesting uh, exploration. Then we have oh Ben Harper. I've checked this out. Th I've checked this guy out before, but uh, not really in any sig significant significant depth. I think this is his debut album. Uh, Welcome to the Cruel World. Could be interesting. Um, I've heard he's kind of like a folkier Lenny Kravitz, basically. This is is what I remember from what I listened to him the first time around. And then we have Lush with their album Spooky. I know I've heard of Lush before, but I have uh, have no idea what they're. I think they're like grunge or maybe post grunge. So, let's see. oh, then we have a slim CD case here, which is oh Michael Franti and Spearhead. I've got what three of their albums. So, yeah, we'll definitely. Uh, be interested to hear a fourth album of his. His albums, sometimes they have not really... There are some, some albums of his that I have not been able to uh, get into. So that one will definitely be a question mark. We'll have to see if I get into that one or not. And aha! Christina Aguilera. Back to basics. I used to have this album a long time ago. And same story with me as you've heard about... 30 or, 30 or 40 times before, I grew a little bit tired of it and got rid of it in a space-saving CD crunch. But uh, I, <clears throat> excuse me, I loved the retro sounds that she uh, infused into some of these songs. It was very, very cool. And now I am looking forward to listening to the album again. This was, uh, if you remember back in the day of when this album was released, this is a two-disc set, so nice long album. And we have two left. The next to last one, the penultimate one, is uh, Mason Williams, A Gift of Song. Uh, Mason Williams is a local uh, music artist. He, he grew up, or at least lived, a huge amount of his life in the greater Eugene area, Eugene, Oregon. And, uh, yes, I have... Uh, he's the guy who wrote Classical Gas, one of the all-time greatest instrumental songs which Weird Al Yankovic performed as one of the encores during his Eugene stop at the 
on his ridiculously self-indulgent, ill-advised vanity tour. And Mason Williams was actually in the audience. And I, I don't know if that if Al knew that ahead of time before the concert and if that influenced his choice to do that uh, or or not. But it was very it was kind of cool to uh, you know hear him shout the guy out, and so I was able to look behind and. He was so oh, he was like thirty or forty rows back, but he was up there and stood up and waved waved his hand, and that that was very cool. An extra little icing on the cake uh, memory from that concert it was great. But yes, this is a Christmas album, so being very cool. I have one of his albums. Well, one of his albums, an album that he did with Mannheim Steamroller, an instrumental group, uh, on CD, and I think I have three or four of his albums on vinyl. So, and this marks another CD album I have. And the final disc is, oh, Marc Antoine. He is a jazz guitarist. He's holding a guitar there. Uh, that, uh, and a jazz guitarist that my sister had a couple of albums of his. Uh, and I think I saved his greatest hits in, uh, in my collection. So not, uh, not worried at all about listening to another album of Marc Antoine. So there you go. It's actually a very good uh, bag of uh, CDs here. There, I can tell there are probably going to be two or three already that are going to be keepers in this. So, well, that does it. A uh, quick and dirty video here for Bargain Bag. That'll do it for Bargain Bag for September 2022. I hope you enjoyed this video. If so, hit that like button and share it with your friends. Uh, and give me your thoughts, questions, suggestions, or constructive criticisms in the comment section below. Also scroll down to the description for the links to my Twitter and Instagram feeds and links to my favorite fellow YouTubers who are all worth checking out. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't yet and browse my past videos and be sure to ring that notifications bell so you'll be the first to know each time I drop a new video. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time and remember, life's too short to be a music snob.